Hello everybody, welcome back. Around a year ago or so I had filmed a perfume collection video and seeing as I love perfume so much I was thinking about doing a perfume related video but I thought that since my collection didn't really change much since last year it would be quite redundant to refilm a collection video so instead I decided to film a top 5 fragrances but I kind of cheated a bit, you will understand why later on. I have selected five perfumes that I tend to wear most often from the collection that I have at the moment. Let's get on with my top five favorite perfumes. The first one that I picked was quite easy to choose. It is by Erin Lode and it is Gardenia Rattan. It is hands down one of my favorite perfumes in my collection. It was quite an easy pick. Traveling in Milan when I first saw this brand and I knew that I would get something from the brand because I love the whole concept of the brand so much. So when it comes to this brand, I love everything from the bottle to the scent. The scent is quite a given really, it's called Gardenia Rattan and the predominant note is Gardenia. But what I love about this scent is that this is not your standard old granny floral scent. It has a seawater note. I find that it contributes to make this scent a bit younger and more vibrant, which I love. I can't get enough of this scent and it is my go-to scent that I have been recently using. However, the only downside when is its longevity. Unfortunately, it's quite weak. And I don't really carry perfume bottles around in my bag just because I'm afraid that they might break and damage my bags. So when the scent wears off, it just wears off and I'm perfumeless for the day. It only lasts a couple of hours. When it comes to silage, I find it can be built up from weak to moderate, but that's it. It's not invasive and that's another thing that I love about this. It's quite subtle and fresh and vibrant and I really love this perfume. The second perfume that I picked up was also quite easy to pick out. It is by Jo Mello. It is the Peony and Blush Suede scent. Now, I remember when this first launched, there was quite some hype around this fragrance. I remember that every blogger was blogging about this fragrance and I initially thought that it was just maybe a PR stunt, but when I smelled it myself later on, I knew that I would get it and I understood what the fuss was all about. This scent is incredible. Now, I love Jo Malone as a brand. I tend to love most of her scents, but this one is just exceptional. Dominant notes in this fragrance are peony and suede. Well, I would have never guessed, but there's a red apple note in this fragrance and I think that that's what makes the suede note less harsh than it would be without that note. This is the perfume that I also chose to wear on my wedding day, so it makes it extra special for me. And when it comes to silage and longevity, I find that they are much better than the previous perfume that I showed you. If you apply a lot of this, I find that silage can be moderate to even heavy. And when it comes to longevity, it's quite moderate. So the third perfume that I picked out is the Narciso Rodriguez for hair and I remember when I first smelled this perfume I actually had smelled the Eau de Toilette version on a sample on a magazine and I went to pick out the Eau de Toilette but instead I ended up picking out this one because this appealed to me a bit more. First of all, I really like the bottle. It's masculine, a bit edgy but still feminine at the same time. It's made of this thick heavy glass and I really like how it looks. The predominant note is musk and you don't really have to do any research to understand that. You can instantly tell because this is a very heavy floral and it, this is not the kind of perfume that I would wear on a daily basis. I, I wouldn't say I have to be really in the mood for it because this is the kind of perfume that I gravitate towards. I love florals but this is much heavier than the previous two perfumes that I showed you so I try to avoid you know wearing this when I know that I will be commuting a lot or will be in a waiting room or something similar because I understand that some people might probably find, find this nauseating or it might just give them a headache luckily to me it does neither and I really love this perfume and this also has bergamo and patchouli notes in it which is a combination that I normally always end up loving. My fourth pick 
is the Stella Nude and as you can see I'm running very low on this one. This is my go-to perfume. I don't really have to be in any kind of mood to wear this. I just spritz this on and I'm good. This is my kind of scent in the sense that it is a floral fragrance but it is not invasive, it's not heavy. It's just one of those go-to perfumes which I love and Funnily enough, this was actually my only blind buy that I ever made and meaning that I didn't really smell the scent before. I remember I was in a store and they were having a perfume sale. I saw this one and there wasn't really a tester for it and I hadn't had the slightest hint of what notes were in this one but for some reason I have no idea what compelled me to buy it that day but I'm quite thankful because I ended up loving this one. Quite moderate when it comes to silage but I find that it is not as long lasting as I would love to but having said that it still lasts for a good couple of hours so that's always good. The predominant note in this is rose but apparently it also has pink pepper and pink grapefruit which I normally do not gravitate toward but for, for some reason this whole combination works out good. So the last scent that I chose is Serge Luton's Greek Lair. Now Serge Luton's is a niche fragrance brand and I really love the house. Create incredibly particular scents which I really love the scent but this is one of those scents that I really have to be in the mood for it. It's really specific and particular. The predominant note in this is lavender but it also has wood and iris in it so the whole combination as you can probably tell is quite innovative. This is one of the reasons that I really love this brand. When it comes to longevity, I find that it's quite long lasting on me. And with regards to silage, I think it's moderate. And this scent in particular is quite light, it's sophisticated, but you can really tell that it is a very particular perfume. I already have another fragrance by Serge Lutens, it is called Five O'Clock on Gingembre. It is a gourmand, that's a gourmand scent and it's even more particular than this. So this is the part where I kind of get to cheat. After I selected those five fragrances, I realized that there were two other fragrances that deserve to be in this video as well because I really like them as well. So let's just treat these two as, as two perfumes which deserve an honorable mention. So the first one that I chose is by the brand Tocca and it is called Cleopatra and I have really happy memories about this fragrance. I got this one during my first visit to London and coincidentally it was also my first visit to an anthropology I remember I really loved the setting. There was a wall full of ivy and they had this white bed and white nightstand and the nightstand was just was just full of Tokka perfume. I had never really heard of the brand before or owned anything. It's incredibly intricate as you can see and it's also really heavy. The dominant notes in this one is also musk but it also has a lot of fruity notes which is weird for me because I do not normally like fruity scents but I guess that the tuberose notes and the musk kind of makes it exciting for me. This is really different from anything that I own and that is why probably I love this so much. When it comes to silage, I find that this is quite moderate. With regards to longevity, I find that it is very long lasting on me. I would be spelling this hours and hours and hours after I applied it. And the last perfume that I decided to choose for this video is the Coco Noir by Chanel. If you've watched my perfume collection video before, you might have heard me saying that I am not a fan of Chanel fragrances. And, you know, it's been a year and I still don't really love Chanel perfumes as much. Now, I do love their Les Exclusive collection, but I do not really own any just yet. First of all, I think the bottle is incredibly beautiful. I'll probably just keep this bottle after I'm done with it. It's that nice. This is a perfume that has rose, patchouli and bergamo in it. And you can see a pattern. If, there, if there's a perfume that has bergamo and patchouli at the same time in it, chances are that I will love it, as has been in this case. This is heavy. I only tend to wear this for nighttime. I am not really a person who goes by 
wearing specific perfume for day or for night or during particular season i just go by mood but when it comes to this perfume keep this as a night perfume and i find that this is really nice as a dinner or a specific formal event perfume it is quite sophisticated and heavy i find that it is quite long lasting as well and when it comes to silage it is quite moderate to heavy those were my five top favorite perfumes and also my two honorable mentions i hope you've enjoyed this video if you have any questions feel free to let me know and also let me know what are your favorite perfumes do you have any recommendations of perfume that i might like if so let me know in the comments below thank you very much for watching bye